<coughs> well, happy Tuesday, everybody. I hope you guys all had a wonderful, not wonderful, I hope you had a fantabulous Thanksgiving weekend. You got to share with family and friends. I had a pretty good Thanksgiving. Um, I went to my sister in love's, had some nice uh, fried chicken. Never, ever, ever till I start going over there did I start having fried chicken on Thanksgiving. But I actually look forward to that more than any ham or turkey. So pretty interesting. Let me see. Yes, as you guys are hopping on, please, please, please drop in the comments, say hello. So we got Miss Dorothy. She was a cooking machine last week for Thanksgiving. A Holly? No, 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 no. I'm coming back. Hey, Alex. I'm going to say a bull right now. I did this yesterday too. I'm going to cheat and I'm going to go listen to it. And we're going to go, we're going to be friends again. I'm going to start practicing your name every day. So next Tuesday, come on and I'm going to say it perfect or else we have to make some kind of wager. Okay. Hey, Keisha. So I've already shared on my personal page that I was going live. I'm going to pull up LinkedIn because there's a little bit of a lag on that sometimes. And last Wednesday was horrible. Um, people weren't able to comment in real time. So I'm just going to check that out really quick. All right. So I'm good on LinkedIn. LinkedIn, I see a few of you guys are on with me. Drop down in the comments. Let me know that you're here. So let's see. Miss Dorothy says, I always start cooking early and we'll do that for Christmas. Amen. Because if you say we are going to eat at three o'clock, when I get to your house at three o'clock, I'm ready to pray so we can eat. <laughs> so I'm sure that makes it easier for you too. But last week we talked about YouTube. Um, Wednesday night, the live was really good. I enjoyed it. People told me they enjoyed it as well. And we talked about monetizing that specifically just because I had shared part of my journey, how I was able to monetize my YouTube page this year. And people were asking me to share that information. So I was like, cool beans, I can do that. Well, I had something planned for this week. I was actually going to talk about enrolling for your um, EA license. However, yesterday in my group, the Tax Pros Representation Journey, we talked about 2024 marketing strategy. And it was interesting to me as I was talking to them and as I've talked to other people and they're coming up with their marketing strategy, sometimes the strategy is just post, 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 but they don't have any way set in place to track the progress that they're making or to keep track of the people that they are coming across. Another interesting thing that I found was that when people think about marketing and they're putting all this stuff on social media, that's the only thing they're doing. So they're only using, let's say, Facebook or Instagram. They're not using any other measures to reach out to clients. And I don't know about you all, but for me, you know, sometimes people will post on social media like I'm looking for a tax person. But how many of you guys have seen somebody on, it could be LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. How many people have seen somebody post hey, I owe the IRS like $50,000. I owe the IRS $100,000. Now, I'm not going to say that there's nobody out there doing it, but it's not as common as somebody saying, hey, I need to get my taxes filed. Like, who do you use for your taxes, right? Tax representation clients aren't going to just fall out of the sky. So in the tax pros representation journey, I help the people in there with the top two fears that enrolled agents have that is being able to actually help the client and do the work and then being able to get clients so i said you know what because this is something that a lot of people struggle with thank you thank you alex for participating so alex said not many like i said i haven't seen it 
Maybe it's just because I haven't seen it. Or no, you know what? I take that back. I've never seen anybody say that they owe $100,000 or more, which is the threshold that I work with. But I have seen people say like, hey, I owe the IRS or I'm in Kentucky. Hey, I owe Kentucky. Does anybody know somebody that can help? And not to make light of their situation, but usually the people that will broadcast that information owe like under $5,000. So it is something that could be a DIY project, right? However, the people in big trouble that are losing sleep at night, that are looking at possibly having to sell different assets or have their bank account levied, they're not posting that on social media. So if you looked at the description, I said, you know, tax representation clients do not fall out of the sky. What can we do throughout the year to make sure that we have a steady, predictable amount of clients coming in the door? Because we offer an amazing service being able to represent these clients if they're being audited, helping them stop levies, which is wage garnishments as well as bank garnishments. But how do they know that that's what we do and how we can help them? So before I get going too far, y'all in here comment today. So, hey, Derek, congratulations to you and your wife on your graduation. What else did you say? Marketing is so important that people won't expose their personal issues or information until they know you can actually help them. Exactly. That's look, get out of my notes. Get out of my notes. Uh, Ms. Dorothy said, me neither, but I'm very new to this EA journey. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And Derek, you are very welcome, sir. So the first thing I want to talk about, you know, social media is most definitely okay to use, right? The majority of you know me now because we're connected on either Facebook, LinkedIn. Some of you guys found me on YouTube, which I think is pretty cool. But that's not enough because think about it this way. If you have all the connections in the world on Facebook, I think what you can have 5,000 friends, you can have even more followers. That's all fine and dandy. But I post about being an enrolled agent, helping taxpayers or other EAs every day. All right. But guess what? I still will see people that I'm connected with on Facebook that interact with my post like it, comment, message me about it. I'll see them in person. They'll be like, oh, I didn't realize that you were still doing tax work. I didn't realize you were doing taxes still. I didn't know that you helped people that owe the IRS that much money. Even people that I'm related to, family members, even people I go to church with and see every Sunday that I have a relationship with, or talk on the phone with, text, they still don't get it and they see my stuff every day. Now, am I saying that social media is bad? Absolutely not. The point I'm trying to drive home is just posting on social media is not enough. Because if these people are interacting, if I've explained to my family members what I do, hoping that they'll send me people and they still don't get it, that means it's not enough. So when we're doing our marketing, one is always the loneliest number, but most definitely don't let your one only be social media. All right. It's the same as don't have all your eggs in one basket. Right. Because even if you ha did have, you know, an amazing page that has a lot of engagement, you get a lot of clients from social media. What are you going to do if tomorrow Facebook shuts down? What are you going to do if your page gets hacked and you lose all those people? You don't actually control that data. So what I was encouraging my community to do yesterday is create something that people can opt into. So for example, this wasn't brought up yesterday, but it was brought up before. So I've shared my journey. Um, I've shared it pretty much all year of how I wanted to get a thousand subscribers on YouTube. I was able to do that within what, six and a half months. Cool. I have, I think like 13, 1,370 people that have opted into following me on YouTube. That's amazing. I'm not downplaying that. However, yes, they've opted into being notified that like, hey, Timlin posted a video. Hey, Timlin did this, this, that on YouTube. However, I still not 
would consider that something that they opted into doing to make them a lead because I don't control the data. And what does that mean? Okay, so yes, I control like if something I post only goes to members, right? If it goes to subscribers, who can see it? I can do all that, but I can see my list of subscribers, but I don't know anything about them other than their YouTube name. I don't know their name, some of them, because some of y'all got some weird YouTube names, but I don't know their name. I don't know where they live. I don't know anything about them to help me with my avatar. And if YouTube shuts down, if YouTube says we're sick and tired of Timlin, I lose all that data as well. So getting excited about YouTube is cool. But again, we forget that YouTube is social media. It could be here today, gone tonight. I could say the wrong thing, make somebody mad, my page is shut down. So all the work that I put into that is lost unless I create something that they opt into that I control. Now, yesterday, <laughs> I had some people that wanted to do a newsletter. That's cool. That's something you control. You determine, you know, how often you reach out to them. You can get them directly in their inbox. And even with me on my uh, website, I can invite people to join me on the website. So not only can I send them emails, I can also send push notifications right to them. I can ask them different information about themselves. And if they're willing to share that, then I have that to use so I know how to market to them. Because here's the thing. We always tell people, like, if you don't like something on Facebook, keep scrolling, right? Any social media. Now, for the most part, people don't. They want to get on there and argue, right? But when it's tax stuff, they just scroll past it. If somebody's opted in to say, hey, Timlin, I want to hear from you and email, the chances of them buying from me later, or maybe not buying from me, but supporting me, being informed by me, that's going to raise my chances of them either being a client later or being what I'd like to call a disciple that is going to pass around, not pass around, I say spread the good news of the work that I do right? So that's going to be your main goal whenever you get people to opt in to whatever it, ha whatever it is. So it could be a newsletter. Um, for some people, it's really cool because some people don't like to write. I get that. If you're good on video, you could shoot five minute videos of tax tips every week to send out to your audience. Now, for me, I'm not building my tax book of business anymore. When I say tax book of business, I mean tax preparation. So I'm not sending any tax tips that are going to be attracting people that are trying to get their taxes done. I will send tips for certain compliance that I see people that owe over $100,000 miss. So will I send information on estimated tax payments? Absolutely. Will I send stuff on withholding? Absolutely. So another thing we have to make sure that we're doing with our content, whether it's via email, whether it's video on YouTube, whatever else you may be doing, you have to make sure that your content is actually geared towards your audience and it makes sense. I had somebody that's like, the only people reaching out to me are people that want to get their taxes done, people that are looking for bookkeeping. And I was able to go through their content with me and I'm like, well, all you're talking about is saving money on your taxes. All you're talking about is tax planning. You're going to attract what you put out, all right? And when you narrow down who you want to help, what your service offerings are, not completely, but it helps repel the people that you don't want to work with. Let me see. I'm sorry because I missed some comments. Look, if this has been good so far, will you guys give me a thumbs up, give me a heart, share with another tax professional? So Miss Dorothy says a CPA reached out to me to assist with tax representation cases. That is awesome. All right. So I just talked about content marketing a little bit. So if you're posting on social media, doing the videos like on YouTube, or even if it's on Facebook, LinkedIn, that's awesome. That would be considered social media content marketing. If you decide to partner with a CPA to help with representation cases, that's cool. You're not in as much control 
Something else to consider, and I talked about this with my group yesterday. One of the best things you can do in the tax representation world to get a consistent flow of clients is building your network so that you have a referral network. Now with this, Miss Dorothy, I'll take your comment down. With this, you do have to be intentional. All right. So for example, let's say that you want to work with people that have tax liens, right? For me, when I wanted to work with people with tax liens, I was like, all right, I can look at the lien list. And that is something that was proposed to me. It's something that I learned to go look at the lien list. But I was like, if I do that, I have to do direct mail. And I don't know about you all, but when I work with tax representation clients, I see that they get a lot of advertisements in the mail. Not all of them, most of them get a lot of advertisements in the mail that try to scare them into working with that firm because they say like, hey, you can have a lien coming, a levy coming, or you have a lien, next is going to be a levy. And I said, I don't want to use scare tactics. I want somebody to work with me because they chose me. They feel that I'm the best person to work with them and they understand that this is going to be a partnership. So I don't want to do direct mail. Who else is going to be connected to my people that have a tax lien? And when I thought about it, I said, it's going to be title companies. So what did I do? I still use social media. But you can use the internet to look up these different companies or you can go directly to social media. And I began looking at different people's profiles that were connected to title companies. I'll tell you this, if that's something you're interested in doing, the administrative assistant, executive assistant, office manager within a title company is going to be the person that you want to reach out to because that person is going to be the one that's manually doing the work that's pulling the tax lien. If there's a tax lien, they can't complete the house sale. If they can't complete the house sale, they're not going to get paid. Not them, not the realtors, nobody. So if I'm partnered with people that work in title companies and they know that I specialize in helping people with tax liens, I may not be able to get directly to the person with the lien. However, if I'm there as a resource for the person that sees the lien first, I'm connected to them so they are seeing my content and I'm staying top of mind. Who do you guys think is going to reach out when they come across these liens? Who do you think is going to refer clients with tax liens to me? And here's the thing. All tax liens aren't built the same. And when I say that, when I do my pricing for certain things, one is going to depend on how much they owe. Two is going to depend on like how many liens they have. In my experience working with people that have these tax liens, they're usually connected to some pretty hefty amounts. So again, looking at that, the content marketing is good. If people Google me, LinkedIn is my playground. LinkedIn pops up high on Google. I think it's on the first page. So if somebody looks me up, they're going to go to LinkedIn. They're going to see all this information information about helping people with taxes So the title company, I'm connected to them. They refer this person to me because I've been consistent in marketing. The person they refer is going to be able to look me up and I'm going to pop right up talking exactly about the issue that they have. You see how that works? So yes, I'm on social media. I'm not against that, but it's not measurable. Let me give you an example of why not. So tomorrow night, what's today? Yes, today's Tuesday. Tomorrow night, I'm doing a webinar. It's going to be 90 minutes, and I'm calling it the Tax Pros Representation Journey. Yes, I know that's the name of my community. But with people having a fear, and when I say people, I mean enrolled agents, people interested in doing tax representation work, there's a fear of not being able to get clients, and then there's a fear of not knowing how to do the work. In this 90 minute webinar, for the people that join, if you're not on the list, why not get on there? 
But for the people that join, in 90 minutes, I'm going to walk them through the process that I use to determine what the client actually qualifies for. What do I mean? I have people reach out and say, hey, I'd love to partner with you. Uh, I want to see if my client qualifies for an offer and compromise. And I'm like, okay, what did you get? And they're like, well, what do you mean? Well, did you not look at their financials, look at their assets to determine anything? And they haven't done any of the work because they don't know what work to do, right? So I'm going to walk you, like I said, through that process, what things you need to look at to say, hey, should this person be in what we call currently not collectible? Should this person uh, actually put some of these taxes in bankruptcy? Is it going to qualify for bankruptcy? Should we be looking at offering compromise, a different type of installment agreement? I'm going to be doing that with you all tomorrow night if you signed up. Now, I shared that because I made a post at maybe 2 o'clock in the morning Sunday, right? It was um, a picture of lemon bars. I used my grandma's recipe. Within 30 minutes, I had two people sign up. One person sent me stars, and then I saw they registered. Another person, who I know is not on my email list, so they didn't get the information there, they did not like my post. They did not share my post, unless they took a screenshot and shared it. They did not comment on my post, not on my personal page, not on the America's Favorite EA page, not on LinkedIn. But they still signed up within 30 minutes. Now, if I was a person that is only focused on the likes, the hearts, the engagement in the comments, Facebook, I would have left Facebook a long time ago. For whatever reason, Meta doesn't like me. I don't get a lot of love over there. But I keep posting because it works and collaborates with all my other marketing efforts. I know people see me because when I have a call to action, like book a call, join the email list, I have people converting. Okay? So again, Posting on social media, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, it's good, but it shouldn't be all you do. Because like I said, it's not measurable because, yeah, you're looking at the likes and everything, but you can't really tell who saw it. Because like I said, based on how many people like that post, I could have been like, well, I'm never going to post again. However, I know it converted because I saw the people that signed up within 30 minutes, right? All right. Let me come back down. So we have the content marketing. We have referral marketing. Let me look in these comments really quick because you guys are actually giving me something to go off today. And if you guys have any questions, drop them down in the comment section because while we're live like this, I like to get you all's feedback, answer any questions that I can. So Derek says, because you've continuously marketed yourself, that's why I know you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Consistency is definitely key. Even so, I've considered not even having the America's Favorite EA business page because I can post the same thing over there and it feels like it flops completely, right? However, if I post it on my personal page, I'll get a little bit more love. LinkedIn will blow it up. However, because I see who's registered for the webinar, I know that me posting on Facebook works because I see who books calls with me with bonus tax solutions. I know posting on Facebook works. So again, don't let the lack of likes or comments discourage you. All right. Consistency is key. So definitely you got to keep at it. And with that being said too, as you're building your referral network, maybe you don't only want to work with tax liens like I mentioned, and partnering with the title company. Think about who else is connected to your target audience. All right. So at one time, I worked with insurance agents. All right. Because <laughs> if they're independent, even if they're not independent, let's say they work with a chain, let's say like a state farm or something like that. If they're just starting out and they haven't done any type of conversion to an S Corp, guess what? They're phenomenal at sales. They are usually going to be in pretty big tax trouble within year two or three. And 
I was going to say to no fault of their own. I think like everybody needs to know when to outsource and reach out to other experts. But if I know that I know how to handle their issues, wouldn't it make sense for me to reach out to State Farm directly? Now, there are different, there's different red tape and stuff to get around, right? But there's still a way for me to get within that network and networking events so I can get in front of insurance agents, right? If I want to partner with attorneys, because I know before they do a bankruptcy, they need to have the transcripts to see what tax returns, if the tax returns are filed, they need to know what tax debt, if any, qualifies to go into bankruptcy. Otherwise, they're pra- they're, it's malpractice. I have attorneys right now that I'm partnered with that hate to do that. So guess what? I don't always have the opportunity to solve a tax problem, but I have a relationship with them where they have me built into the process and they build a client. So I pull the transcripts and see what qualifies and make sure everything is actually filed. There's opportunity for partnership and referral everywhere. And guess what? If there's tax debt there that doesn't qualify for the bankruptcy, guess who's there who's been a trusted resource and friend and has gotten paid? Guess who's there to say, hey, I can take care of that. You refer your client to me so I can still make you look good, right? So we have the partnerships. We have intentional partnerships. I had to go look for these people. I had to think about who's going to be talking to my audience, right? So we have the content marketing. We have referral marketing. We have, I guess you could say, the partnership marketing, But let's keep going. Let's see. Derek says these platforms are intellectual property owned by the specific platforms, thus making us dependent on that particular entity. Yes, if that's all we use, which again, I encourage everybody to have something that they own that people have to opt into. For example, so I have an email list. I do. I haven't pushed it like I should. Um, So for Bowen's Tax Solutions, I'm actually getting ready to change that into a free 15-minute training that will be the three mistakes that people that owe $100,000 or more make with their taxes, right? Because right now I had something that was very, um, is basic and vague. So it wasn't attracting my threshold of people that owe $100,000 or more. It was attracting anybody that owed the IRS. So not only with your content, if you decide to use a lead magnet, you want to be sure that it's going to qualify whoever you're attracting as well, right? Because what's the point of getting leads if they don't qualify to work with you? Now, not 100% of your leads are going to qualify to work with you, be who you want to work with. However, you want to do what you can to get it as close as possible, right? On the America's Favorite EA, yes, there is still a lead magnet up, um, the back tax negotiation checklist, because we have a lot of people, like I mentioned earlier, it's like, hey, I want to partner with you to see if they qualify for an offer and compromise. Well, the back tax negotiation checklist is going to give you a checklist of everything you need to look at and take into consideration before you actually call to negotiate with the IRS. That is going to qualify my people because guess what? Tax pros that aren't interested in doing tax representation, they're not going to sign up for that. Now, I'll get taxpayers over there occasionally. That's fine. They can unsubscribe later. But here's the thing. For me, I enjoy writing and teaching. It's something I just love to do. So last week, I did an article on using the CSED to help your client. Right. So if you're not familiar, the CSED is the collection statute expiration date. For that, I write articles specific to tax representation every single week. I have people in the tax pro representation journey who have access to that. And I also have people, there is a lower tier where they only get the paid articles that also have access. Both of those people have raised their hand higher to be like, hey, Timlin, I want to work with you. 
But in addition to that, I have another level of free articles that mostly talk about um, how to become an enrolled agent. Um, I'm about to do one on how to renew your P10, the enrolled agent continuing education. All of those are free. When people opt in to get communication from them, I'm giving them tips weekly. All right. So that's the other thing. Once you have people opt in, you don't have to give them something right away, but make sure that you are nurturing them and giving them a reason to stay opted into receiving information from you. Okay. I am so behind. So Derek says, that's why we must create our own apps. Agreed. Alex says, awesome information. Thank you, sir. Deja, hey, so send a video instead of a newsletter. That is an option. So let me see. For the tax year 2021, so January 2022, instead of sending all my tax clients a newsletter or an email, with, this is a checklist of yada, yada, yada. We had so many changes in 2021, right? So what I did, I recorded a video. It was supposed to be three minutes. I think it was like 10. Um, <laughs> I had one client that said, send me a checklist. I'm never watching a video like that again because I did start going on a rant. But anyway, this video set the expectations of how I wanted them to communicate with me that year. It set the expectations for... Um, because we had all this stuff with the stimulus and people had certain questions. So I addressed all of that and it would have been probably like, I don't know, a never ending email checklist. So if video is your thing, Deja, what you're going to do, if you got a good phone camera, um, if you have good video, whatever you have, instead of writing everything, you were going to take the time to shoot a video, hit the points you want to do. Um, I shoot a video once. If I mess up, I laugh, I keep going. Y'all know I'm human. But then after that, you would just embed it in your email and send it out. All right. So sometimes we make things a lot more complicated than they have to be. You hate writing? Don't do a newsletter. You love doing video? Shoot that video and pop it in the email right? It doesn't have to be harder than that. So Derek has something blank. Oh, you know what? I learned my lesson. I know what that blank thing is. Thank you. Because I think that means that you just sent me some stars and I appreciate it. You guys, if this is good for you, good to you, feel free to send me some stars, put a little bit of offering in the offering plate. So Alex says, makes sense. Go directly to the source. Yes, referral marketing is so powerful. And something that people don't understand is they want immediate results. I mean, we all do, right? If it works faster, it's better. But you have to take into consideration too, these people are trusting you with something that's going to affect their money. So a bankruptcy attorney right off the bat may not just start sending people to you the next month, right? Or if we have a divorce lawyer, because those are other people that are amazing to partner with, because when we have the division of assets and everything, if we have people getting divorced later in the year, so let's say both spouses work, but when they have to file the next year, now they file as single versus married, they have a tax bill they weren't expecting, Divorce lawyers are an awesome resource because they're trying to help them get everything cleaned up, right? But you do have to take the time to build that relationship. Right now, and guys, I'm not even kidding. Right now, you want to make sure while you're seeing your family and stuff, yeah, you don't want to be the person where everybody feels like you're trying to sell something, but you're not trying to sell your family members. You want to make sure all of your family understands what you actually do. All right. And sorry, LinkedIn's over here and it's not always doing what it's supposed to do. And in addition to that, when you're explaining to your family what you do, 
if they're looking at you like, huh, what does that mean? What? That means you need to work on your messaging because if your family doesn't understand, chances are the people on the internet don't understand what you're doing either. And that might be one of the reasons you're not getting a lot of engagement, right? But this is also the perfect time to partner with realtors because yes, you have the title company, but you do have realtors as well that are working directly with that person. So the client's not always going to trust the title company. They'll probably trust the realtor better. And because they're going to have that closer relationship with them, the realtor is going to be more motivated to get it closed. And guess what? The majority of realtors that I talk to that experience a tax lien or experience having a client that has a tax lien, they send them right back to the tax professional they've been using. And guys, if somebody has a tax lien and they're with a tax professional and the tax lien is not being removed, they don't have any type of payment arrangement set up, that tax professional probably can't help them, but they're sending them right back to the same person. They're staying in the same cycle of having the tax debt and not being able to sell that house. So yes, that's another group that it's really important that if you want to work in that tax lien space, you're able to help educate them so you can tell them like, hey, this is how I can be of benefit to you too. Link to webinar, please. Let me see. Are you on Facebook? Yeah. For some reason, when I drop it in, my people on LinkedIn can't see it. So I just put it in the Facebook comments. If you guys can see that on Facebook, um, let me know. Deja says, yes, very excited to join tomorrow night. Awesome, awesome. Good deal, Keisha. So Keisha says she just started partnering with bankruptcy attorneys. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to share one more thing that we all <laughs> just goes over our heads sometimes. We talked about content marketing, social media. We're all on social media, so we probably all see that, right? And the link is posted just in case you don't see it. Sorry, you can type that. Or you can go to americasfavoritea.com, and I think it's under workshops. But we have the content marketing. Cool. We have referral marketing. Awesome, that partner referral marketing. Because you have something to actually track your leads, which by the way, until I control them, I don't call them leads. So I only call them leads after they've opted into receiving something from me. We have our family, which is also going to be referral, which don't, don't depend on them for all your business, but they still need to understand what you do, right? Something we forget to do though, is inform the clients that we already have that we help with tax problems. Because here's the thing, unless you have a power of attorney for your tax clients, you don't know if they paid their tax bill from last year or not, right? When I give my clients instructions on how to pay the bill, they say, thank you. I just assume that they went and they paid the tax bill like I told them to. You want to make sure that you send out some kind of communication, whether it's a short video, it could be an email, letting everybody in your client list know, hey, you guys know me as a tax preparer, but did you also know that I'm an enrolled agent or I'm an aspiring enrolled agent? What does that mean? That means I can help you negotiate your tax debt. That means I can help you with an audit. That means if your bank account is being levied, I can help you. Because guess what? Everybody likes to think that they have the best, right? And with all these pop-up shop tax preparers that aren't legit, they're out here scamming people, pookie in them. Your client knowing, hey, you have a certification from the IRS you specialize in doing this, one, they're probably going to be like, what? I didn't even know that. Two, 
if they've been too embarrassed to tell it, you that they haven't been paying their tax bill each year and that it's just been building, 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 they're going to come to you for help now. But not only that, they're going to tell their family and friends because it's one of those almost bragging rights like, well, does your tax professional do this? Right? It's crazy because I overlook that as well. And again, even though I have certain clients connected to me on social media, I've sent out emails about helping with tax stuff. It never fails, never fails. Every year, I have at least one client that tells me, oh, I didn't know you help people that owe the IRS. What? <laughs> what in the world? So make sure that you are sending that out to your clients as well, because a lot of you are getting ready to send out organizers, whether that's via tax dome, you have the PDF. Just send them a gentle reminder like, hey, if you have a family member or friend, I like to phrase it that way so they don't feel attacked. But if you have a family member or friend that owes the IRS, I always set a threshold this much or more. Please, please, please connect the two of us. I would love to be able to help them with their tax issue and let it go from there. But again, all the stuff that we talked about is good but not all by itself, all right? Because again, one is going to be the loneliest number. Now, one last thing, unless you guys have questions, because if you guys have questions, then I'll stay on a little bit later. Camilla says, yes, I'm not sure what you said yes about, but yes. Uh, Deja, the time zone for tomorrow is Eastern. Yes, it is 7 p.m. Eastern. Yes, ma'am. And it is not going to be a live stream like this. And it is not like there's not going to be a replay later. So you guys know how like on Tuesdays, like I'll leave it up on LinkedIn, Facebook, and it'll make its way to YouTube later. Tomorrow night's not going to be like that. So make sure you are in the room. <laughs> okay, got you. Yes to the webinar link. So something I talked about yesterday that I want to share with you guys too so like I said, it's awesome to have social media to get all those eyes. So I'll share with you guys this last, the last 28 days or so on YouTube, I've had 7,400 views, right? 7,400. That's amazing, but I don't know if that was my mom watching it 400 times right? I don't know if that was 700 people watching each video 10 times. There's no way for me to control that. When I look for me, if I'm only emailing people, I'm only connecting with them on social media after they've opted into the list and they see my stuff. Typically, 10% of those people are going to convert to become a client or to do whatever I want them to do, right? Because sometimes it's not about them becoming a client yet. Maybe it is them being a referral partner. So for you, when you're looking at your marketing for 2024, I want you to have at least two, two to four different strategies. Yesterday, I made them do two to three, right? So with your two to four strategies, your goal is going to be to get 10 times however many clients you want. That's the amount of leads you need. All right. So if we're looking at the average case being $5,000, and let's say that you want three clients each month, you need to get 30 leads. And, you know, you might be like 10% is really low. Well, I'd rather be low to be better safe than sorry. And here's why you'll have 30 people opt in. But if you have a funnel, that's like this and catching everybody because you don't know who you want to help versus one like this, you're going to have people that are opting in to get information from you that aren't actually qualified to work with you. Okay. So I would say maybe Two thirds of those people are going to actually be qualified. And from there, even though having a tax issue 
you know, is a big deal. Keep me up at night. There's no sense of urgency for some people until they see the levy notice. So they may get on your list and be like, yeah, I need to take care of that, but they may not take care of it yet. So just because you have the 30 leads added that month, that's good. Keep building the list because like Derek said earlier, consistency is key. But I would encourage you to get at least, excuse me, at least that many each month to start going towards those three clients for the month. And it doesn't just have to be people that would be potential prospects. You want to get your referral partners on too, because that's another way for you to stay top of mind. So I know some people that send out like a separate email to their referral partners, or they send a separate email to not or, and they send a separate email to their um, prospects. So for example, if you're that person that is partnered with realtors, let's say you're partnered with a hundred different realtors, right? And every month you send them a vlog, video newsletter, whatever you want to call it, giving them tips for their taxes and then putting that reminder like, hey, if you have a client facing a tax lien, you can't make the close on the sale, yada, yada, yada. Here's how I can help so you can close within 45 days. That's something that's going to benefit them, something they're going to want to share with their people. And if we're looking at you having 100 on your list, you could potentially have one that's going to convert each month. See how that works? And when I say convert, I mean them actually send you somebody that's going to convert. All right. So it's very important that you are able to control the data for referral partners and that you're able to control the data for your potential prospects. Now. I think I am done for the day. I'll let me check and make sure you guys don't have any questions. Alex says, got the link registered. Thanks. You are very welcome. Look forward to seeing you on tomorrow night. Let me check out LinkedIn real quick because for some reason, my LinkedIn comments have not been coming over and I'm so sorry, guys. I did not mean to ignore you today. I'll have to make it up to them if not. But yeah, I'm going to love you and leave you all. I'm looking forward to seeing you on tomorrow night. Up, oh, My tax sister, Lysandra Everett, was over here on LinkedIn. Yeah, I'll have to get with LinkedIn and see what's going on. But I'm looking forward to seeing you guys tomorrow night. Um, if you are looking for other marketing strategies to use on tomorrow which is my writing Wednesday. So an article specific to tax representation comes out every Wednesday. I am going to actually be doing an article on a 2024 marketing strategy. So I'll share a few more strategies and like how I would break them down, how I convert leads because yesterday the private podcast actually came out for my community. But yeah, if you're interested in joining the tax pros representation journey, I will drop that link in as well. But like I said, there is a lower tier as well where you can just get the articles um, and that at, that is at a different price point as well. But I think I've let the lag catch up with me. If you guys don't have any other questions, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys have a great afternoon.